Hello, I am Creative by Lottie and this is my first ever YouTube video. So, a quick introduction. I'm a stained glass artist. Um, you might be here from my other social medias, from my TikTok or from my Instagram. So I, I've had quite a few people on TikTok request that I do tutorial videos or if they can know where to find tutorial videos that are more in-depth explanations than what I post on TikTok explaining how to make your own stained glass pieces. And finally, I decided to put together tutorials and this is actually going to be something I want to do on the regular. I now have a Patreon page. Currently, I have two Patreon membership types. I have a $3 subscription, which is just a general support and appreciation, but it also allows you to vote on what I'm going to be making in my next YouTube tutorial video. You sign up for the $10 Patreon. You get the right to vote for my next YouTube video. You get a monthly discount in my store. There's templates to download, including Sprigatito, Mimikyu, and Moo, all Pokemon related at the moment. We need to get some more variety in there. And if you sign up for three months, you'll receive and they post a mini calcifer print to show you my appreciation. And the tutorial video that I'm going to be showing you what to make today is none other than Sprigatito. I'm going to be going through the complete process of start to finish how I made my Sprigatito. And this little guy will also be available to purchase in my store on the 31st of December, so the end of this month. So I designed the template for Sprigatito and I printed mine out using a Cricut Cup. The template on my Patreon is Cricut Cut ready, but if you don't have a Cricut Cup, Cricut, a Cricut, then you don't need to worry, you can just cut it out with scissors. First off, let's talk about glass. So the glass colours that I use to make Sprigatito, I have to refer to my notes for these. So we've got lime green and white opal Oceanside 96, dark green and white opal Oceanside 96, pink clear and white wispy Oceanside 96, and finally, white opaque luminescent Wismatch 96. This is a list of all the tools that I've used to also make Sprigatito. We have Elmer's Rubber Cement, a Toyo Pistol Grip, Glass Cutter, Glass Plant, the Grinder 2x Technoglass, Black Backed Copper Foil, Pebeo Vitra 160 Glass Paint in black and white, a Hakko FX. 601 soldering iron with a digital temperature control, Artist Pure 6040 solder, Novacan Flux, Novacan Black Patina, Mother's Brazilian Carbuna Cleaner Wax. Without further ado, let us get into it. As I said previously, I designed my template and then I print the design out using my Cricut Cup. I print one coloured version. This template I use, uh, I don't cut this one out. This is solely for glass placement so I know where each piece goes. Um, I use it as a coloured version as well, just so I know if I'm looking for a particular piece, I know which colour it needs to be. So I use the Elmer's rubber glue to stick the templates down onto the glass. So here's the glass that I used for um, Sprigatito's face and you can see that it's got like a line pattern going across the bit. I wanted to make sure that the lines in Sprigatito's face went um, with a direction that made sense to where the pieces were. Also you want to cut your glass down on the, the flatter side so it doesn't matter if it's the front or the back but this side is super rigid. So now we get to move on to the exciting point, we actually get to cut the glass. So ideally you want to make the most difficult cut first. And the most difficult cut in a sheet of glass is going to be a cut where you're sort of like cutting a curve into a glass. When it comes to actually snapping the glass, picture it like a bar of chocolate that you have left in the fridge and you're trying to snap it in half. That's kind of the amount of force that you want to apply to snap the glass. Too much pressure will cause the pliers that you're using to um, crack the glass pieces that you don't want it to crack. Or too much pressure if you're using your fingers, you're just gonna cut yourself. Then once you've cut away the harder cuts, you can simply just cut through the easier ones and then you have your template.
So I will talk you through the hardest cut of this piece. This is the eyes. If this is too daunting for you, um, I'd recommend just cutting out a circle for the eyes and then you can just paint on the pink, black and white details much easier. But if you want to challenge yourself and try a harder cut, let's go for it. First thing you want to do when you have a hard cut like this is, as I said before, you want to cut into the glass so you want to start doing those semicircles. The best way to do it is to cut a semicircle off of one side and then go to the other side in a small semicircle and then one through the middle. Then you want to do the exact same thing on the other eye and then finally cut out the rest of the glass. I like to place my pieces onto like the little template that I've cut out while I'm cutting the glass. This helps me visualize how many pieces I've got left to do. Um, and I like to sort of see it come together as I'm building all the pieces. The large shards that I'm removing from the glass pieces, they're going into Tupperware tubs and I will save these and reuse these. You might have seen me use some smaller shards in this piece. The teeny, 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 tiny little shards that I can't do anything with because I don't have a kiln yet, they just get recycled. So I recommend numbering your pieces. Do not do what I do, especially when you have uh, more difficult and loads of little pieces going on. It just makes it easier so you know what goes where and you won't encounter this problem. You thought I would have learned by now. So the grinder, I actually changed this up a little bit and I don't usually use this coarse grinder but I decided that there was quite a lot of glass to get away on the eyes and I just wanted something that would do it a bit quicker. So this coarse grinding bit is different to the one I usually use. You need an Allen key to attach it. The reason that I don't tend to use this much is because it can chip the edges of the glass. So you only want to use it on a section which you're going to grind down again with a finer um, grinding bit. The basin of the grinder, there's water. So the water is used because it stops the dust that the, the glass is being ground into from flying all around the room and you breathing it in. And you want the sponge there because that keeps the grinding bit wet. I also wear a face mask 
and goggles when I'm grinding. So once you have finished grinding, you will turn this terrifying Frankenstein Sprigatito into this. Look how cute he is. Okay, next stage is copper foil. What is copper foil? It is literally a thin strip of copper metal with a sticky back. The reason that we need to apply this to the edges of the glass is because the solder doesn't actually stick to the glass, it just wipes away. So first off, I wipe down all of the just residue sticky glassy bits left over on each glass piece before I start the copper foil process. You want a clean surface for the copper to stick to and you will use what is called a fid or burnishing tool depending on where you're getting it from. Same thing, just a different name and it's essentially a piece of plastic that's shaped to help you push the copper foil down and all you're doing is sort of pushing the wrinkles and the air bubbles out of the copper foil just so it will stick to the glass really a nice sticky surface so it doesn't peel away so you can buy loads of different thicknesses for copper foil the most common one i use and in fact it's pretty much what i exclusively use i will occasionally go a size up if the glass is particularly thick but it is, um, they're in fractions, fractions. fractions. but it's three sixteenths. That is the common size I use. I'm also using black backed copper foil. And this is because I'm going to patina this. So that means turn the solder black in the end of this piece. And if it's a transparent piece of glass, you will be able to see the foil tape underneath. So if you're doing a copper patina, you'll just use copper backed. If you're doing a black patina, black backed, silver patina, well, if you're not doing a patina and even get silver, then you'll use silver backed. It's that simple. I will say if you're starting out, I recommend using a black patina and black back. Black can hide a lot of mistakes. You will notice that I'm not copper foiling every single edge. This is because on some of the edges, I'm not going to solder them. I'm going to use a lead cane and this will all make sense when I come to do the solder portion of this video. So to copper foil, you want to pull the tape tight around the piece of glass and then sort of cover all the edges that you're going to solder. I then like to pinch down um, the, the edges of the copper foil to like fold them over onto the glass. Curves can be pretty frustrating to copper foil. So what I like to do is just gently sort of rub across the curve. And then once you've done it like a few times, you can start to gently push it down. If you just straight up go and pinch it down, you're just gonna split it. And the reason you don't wanna split your copper foil is your solder will only adhere to the copper foil. So if your copper foil's got like a little split in it, your solder will avoid where the split is. So then once I've pinched down all the edges, I then just go in with my burnishing tool and just push out any crinkles and creases and air bubbles. And then the copper foil is really stuck to it.
and sometimes if you don't perfectly overlap your copper foil edges that you can see here again um, because your solder is going to stick to this it's going to be visible in your finished piece that you've not got like a really nice uniform um, solder around your edges all you want to do is get a really sharp sandy knife and just slice that little extra bit off easy And now we are going to paint Sprigatito's eyes. So as I mentioned previously, I use Pebio Vitra 160. I cannot pronounce the name, I apologize. For this piece, I just used black and white gloss paint. You want to apply it quite thick so that when you hold your glass piece up, you can't see um, brush strokes and see through the glass. I put my glass pieces onto a light box with the template underneath. So then the light box shines the template through my glass and I can just see exactly where I want to paint his eyes on. It just saves guessing work. 
you want to make sure you leave the paint to dry it has to completely dry i say depending on how thick you've painted it a minimum of 24 hours when you want to cure your paint you just put it in a standard oven to cook um, I set it to 160, I don't leave it to preheat, I just put them straight in because I want the glass to gently heat up with the oven so it doesn't get shocked and crack. And then again, once it's been in there for 40 minutes, I turn the oven off, open the door, let the oven cool down, let the glass in there cool down because I don't want to suddenly shock it in really cold air and then the glass will crack. Oh, and another thing, I did this in a weird order. Usually you would paint and then copper foil. I copper foil painted and then I had to copper foil the pieces I'd painted. You don't want to copper foil before you paint because you can't put your copper foiled pieces in the oven. And finally, this is my favorite part. It is time to solder. So I lay all of my pieces. What you can see here is a silicone mat with a wooden board underneath. I use the wooden board because I'm gonna be using push pins and these just hold my pieces in place. So flux is a harsh chemical that removes an oxidized film layer off of your copper foil. It essentially cleans the copper foil and this allows the solder to really nicely adhere to the copper foil. So I dot um, a tiny piece of solder into the joints of all of the glass and this just sort of holds them into place and then I can remove all of the push pins and all of the pieces are sort of held into place. The solder I'm using is the brand Artist Pure and that is 60-40, so I think it's like 60% lead and 40% tin. Um, it's a really nice solder to work with. Again, this piece is for something that is an ornament and isn't gonna to be touched much. If you're making jewelry or something that's gonna be handled a lot of the time, you won't be wanting to use a solder that is lead based. So when I'm soldering, I gently move the soldering iron across the glass and I feed the solder not onto the glass, but onto the actual iron. Then the iron melts it into sort of like a bead. Um, it's like a, a drop of water that when you hold your soldering iron up, you can sort of see like this little drop on the tip of the iron. And you wanna fill, so feed it into your iron and then gently like feed it with one hand and move your iron across with the other. Because I've already dotted uh, bits of solder to hold my pieces together, I take away the solder and then heat up that dot so then I can like, remove that dot somewhere else I want it to be. And then go back in with the solder when I need it, take it out, go back in, um, and just repeat that process.
And now onto jump rings. So these are pretty fiddly to attach to your piece. I like to design my piece so the jump rings are going to be attached onto a piece where two sections of glass meet rather than just a tinned edge. This means that it's just going to have more support when you're hanging your piece, especially if it's quite a big heavy piece. So you want to add a little bit of flux to the corner where you want the jump ring to go and you want to add a little bit of flux onto your jump ring. And I placed it on top of a piece of like the thinnest piece of glass that I've got and I hold it in place with some jewelry pliers that I've got and I turn my soldering iron down to about 310 and I take a small piece of solder, just let it sort of drip through onto the jump ring and then I flip it over and then do exactly the same on the other side. And it is pretty much that simple. It, it, it's a bit fiddly, but it's not too difficult to do. And finally, the came. So this is what I was talking about when I said I've not copper foiled all of the edges. It's because I'm not going to solder them. I'm going to use lead came. This lead came is in like a U shape. And it's that shape because if you imagine this is your piece of glass, it's going to sort of clip on to your piece of glass. So your glass sort of sits really nicely in the pocket. I measure a piece of lead came to the size of the section that I want to use it for and the trick here is you want to make it a bit bigger than what you think it's going to be and then you can slowly take chunks of it off because if you make it too small then it's just unusable and you need to do it again so it's just sort of a better habit to get into and then I hold it in place and um, you'll see I'll use a little heat protector as well because it gets very hot and I'll just dab my solder onto sort of the edge of where I'm adhering it to and onto the came as well and because it's lead came the lead solder will sort of stick to it and they'll both stick to each other and hold it in place. But it was finishing the came on the edges of this piece that by far took the longest. If you don't have any lead came you can just copper foil all of the edges like you would normally and then tin the edge of the piece. And finally, when you're soldering your cane, everything that is done, I then copper foil my piece. I use two different types of copper foil. I use one that's slightly more coarse and a really super, super duper fine one. Um, you want to make sure that you don't copper foil over the paint or else you will actually scratch into the paint. So at this point, I'm just copper foiling all the solder lines, the came, and then I'll go over it with the thinner copper foil just to buff out any lines that the thicker one did. This will really help your finish look super shiny and glossy. It will help your patina adhere to it, so do not miss this stage. I then take my piece and this is the point where it starts to get exciting because I'm washing all that gunk away and I'm actually finally starting to see what it's going to look like all shiny and beautiful. All I'm using to wash this off is an old sponge, one that's not got like a super coarse scour on because I don't want to scratch the newly buffed out solder and just dish soap. And then you want to patina your piece. With patina it is quite a strong chemical so I recommend wearing some gloves. 
I didn't wear gloves one time and I caused chemical burns on my fingers, so definitely wear gloves. Uh, I'm using an, a toothbrush and just helping to buff the patina into all of the solder on the piece. This is a Novacan patina and essentially all a patina does is it reacts with the solder and it turns it either copper, grey and black. This one is a black patina. And finally we come to the polishing stage. So to polish your piece it's pretty much wax on wax off. So this is what I'm using is a carbon carbonara. Car carnabu carbu con carnaruba. Carnaruba. Carnaru it is a carnaruba and you want to apply a layer all over your piece over the came over the patina over the glass leave it for about 15 minutes and you'll notice it will go sort of like a hazy white colour and then really buff that off. Finally, then you can add a chain, take a deep breath because you've finished and you will have your very own sprigatito. So if you want to learn more about making stained glass, if you want to make your own pieces of stained glass, make sure to like and subscribe to this video. I promise I will be adding so much more content to it. Thank you so much. You have been the best.